Hello, this is my presentation on the study of autism and the effects of ABA therapy. So why autism and ABA therapy? The reason I chose to study autism and ABA, aka Applied Behavioral Analysis Therapy, is because my little brother was diagnosed at a young age with autism. It taught his autism is mild, meaning that he can function like a normal person, but has trouble communicating and interacting with other people. He began ABA therapy multiple years ago to try and help him with this communication and I have been very interested in how it works as I have sat through a couple of sessions with him. It's not your normal therapy and to the normal person it does not look like it would help someone, but I want to see if there is data to back up the treatment. So here is a video on the background of ABA therapy. At Easter Seals, our mission is for all individuals with disabilities and special needs and their families to be able to live, learn, work, and play in their communities. That is exactly what ABA therapy strives to do. We're going to look at focusing on areas of need for that individual that help them function independently, as independently as possible in their natural environment. ABA stands for Applied Behavior Analysis. It's a kind of therapy that focuses on behavior. Interventionists work with you and your family member to manage challenging behaviors, encourage positive behavior, and build life skills. So what I would tell new parents is to roll up your sleeves and jump in and do the work and commit yourself because it's worth it. It's all about your child's future. Your child's prognosis has not been written out for them. And that if you can get in there and do the intervention, it's going to make their life better. The assessment process takes approximately one month. It consists of approximately three to four visits. During those visits, the caregiver will give us a list of concerns as well as a developmental history. Uh, following that, the next couple of visits will be working directly with the individual, identifying their areas of strength and their areas of need, and we try to do at least one appointment in the community to see how that individual functions out in their environment. Easter Seals came to our home and met with me, met with Andre, observed him, gathered information. During the assessment, we identify specific treatment areas across various domains such as communication, socialization, daily living skills. Those treatment areas drive specific goals once the treatment team gets in place. The goal of an ABA plan is to gain tools to be as independent as possible. Behaviors that are encouraged are things like communication, asking for things, social skills, anything that positively impacts the individual. I played a very present role in the sessions and I wouldn't have it any other way. I enjoy it. We would we would do activities. Sometimes we would walk and we would practice just good walking. You know, if, if Will would run towards the street, the therapist might do a behavior of, okay, let's do this and now let's model it and then I'd hold his hand and then I'd say good walking. Because ABA is a habit forming behavior. That's what it that's really what it is. It's that way for the child. But you could, take, you could take anybody and do ABA therapy with them and they'll form habits through the ABA and that's the whole point. You want the parents and the children to form habits together. After your referral, assessment, and treatment goals have been established, your team will recommend the type of ABA therapy sessions needed. Either All right, so that's just a little background on what um, kind of goes on uh, during the therapy sessions. Um, at Easter Seals, our so we'll go to the next one. So, what's the problem? So, in my project, I am using the rising cases of autism worldwide and seeing if there is a correlation between the amount of therapy workers and an IQ stabilization in the subjects. The rising cases should make an increase in the amount of therapy workers, and the increase in the therapy workers should then coincide with a decrease in the amount of subjects with less than a 70 IQ score. So here is my project data. So I currently have four vectors. I have the amount of cases worldwide per year, and then that's going to be per 10,000 people. I also have the amount of BCBA certificates earned per year. So a BCBA certificate allows you to be a therapy worker. And then I have um, 
the amount of subjects per 10,000 people with an IQ score less than 70 per year. And then I also have the male to female ratio of cases. So now we can start talking about data. Uh, so let's define some things. So what is big data? So big data is a term uh, to analyze, systematically extract information from, or otherwise deal with data sets that are too large or complex to be dealt with by classical data processing tools. Uh, I would not consider my data to be big data. So I have 108 rows of data containing more than 10 columns of entries. But in terms of data science field, definition of big data, mine is nowhere close to comparison. In 1999, one gigabyte was considered big data, and the bar has increased since then. So here is some of the time series components. So there are four components of time series. So we have seasonal, and this occurs when the time series exhibits fixed and known frequency during the same month every year or during the same quarter every year. And then we also have the trend. So this is defined as the long-term pattern of a time series. Trends are very important when extracting, fitting, and forecasting time series. So we also have cyclical. Any pattern showing an up and down movement around a given trend is identified as a cyclical pattern. And then we also have random, and this is unpredictable. And every time series has some unpredictable components that make it a random variable. So now we can move to data cleaning. So the definition for data cleaning, it is defined as the process of identifying and correcting erroneous entries from a data frame, table, or database, and refers to detecting incomplete or irrelevant parts of the data, and then replacing, modifying, or deleting that data. So in my case, for my data, I located which data entries were outliers uh, using the box and whisker plot, which we will get to later, uh, or did not have data, and used either a trend or a linear slash polynomial equation. And that's just depending on the trend. So my data originally had multiple entries per year, and I had to take an average of the year and use the average as the data point in the year. So here is some of, this is my project data graph. Uh, we can see some trends just looking at the uh, data. So with cases per 10,000, we have a slight uh, linear uh, increasing trend and then we have an exponential in BCBA, and then we have a slight negative trend in the IQ, and um, a slight positive trend in male to female. So here is our stationary analysis. So what makes data stationary? Stationary data is one whose statistical properties such as mean, variance, and autocorrelation are all constant over time. And then non-stationary data, on the other hand, is a time series variable exhibiting a significant upward or downward trend over time. So is my data stationary? So some of my data looks stationary, but none of it is. All the graphs will be different to make them stationary except for the BCBA graph due to its trend. And uh, this is only because the steady exponential trend makes it so that it cannot be differenced around zero. So here is uh, the three graphs after the differencing. Uh, and yet again, the BCBA certificates data cannot be differenced. Um, and there is also the differencing equation as well. And that is just taking um, the current the current data point and subtracting it by the previous one. And that will equal the current on the differencing. So now we can go into forecasting. So there are a couple different messing methods of forecasting my data. And I will be using the simple exponential smoothing. Here's the equation for that. 
and then to continue the forecast after the data has run out, we use an increment to forecast into the future. And there is the equation for the increment. So here I wrote out a plan for uh, choosing alpha in the simple exponential smoothing. So here is an algorithm that I wrote up. So starting out, we start with, uh, I start with uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.8, and 0.5. And then I have to determine which has the best accuracy. So if it's 0 0.2 or 0 0.8, then pick the number closer to 0 or 1, depending on which one has the best accuracy. And then we narrow down between the bounds of 0.2 to 0 or 0.8 to 1. And if it doesn't have a better accuracy between then, then we go to number 4. So if it is 0.5, we pick higher or lower depending on which 0.2 or 0.8 accuracy is better. And then we go halfway between those numbers. And then if the accuracy um, is closer to 0.5, and then we go halfway again to 0.5. But if the accuracy is closer to one of the outside ones, then we go in between the previous number and the outside ones. And then if the accuracy is lower, then pick that final number. But if not, pick the previous number. And if neither, our highest accuracy, then choose the lowest initial accuracy. So uh, here is some of the accuracy methods for forecasts. Uh, I will only be using one of these in my data. And the one that I'm using is going to be the mean absolute deviation. Um, so um, here's the equation. And the reason I decided to use this accuracy method is just due to the simplicity. Uh, you take the absolute error, and then you basically take the um, average of um, all of the absolute errors. So here is the accuracies of my forecast using simple exponential smoothing. And I have the alphas listed and the rankings. So you can see on the BCBA certificates, um, I kind of had a thought that um, I could use the highest possible um, alpha without crossing one and be able to um, have the best possible forecast. So I just stopped it there. Um, but with the other ones, I pretty much followed the algorithm that I made up. So here is um, some correlation that I did in R. Um, just taking a look at it, uh, we can see that there is a strong positive correlation with the cases and the BCBA certificates. And then there is also a weak negative correlation with the cases and the IQ scores. And then we also have a weak positive correlation with the male to female ratio and the cases. So here is some forecasting that I did in R with um, my simple exponential smoothing. Um, so there is the code at the bottom and basically that it's taking the um, forecast or not the for yeah, the forecast and then also spreading it out into a cone showing basically where it can go in the future. So it's, if we look at the BCBA, it's probably not gonna cross below 40,000 in the next 10 years, which is what I set it at. And it's probably not gonna go above the 80,000 mark as well. But if we look at the cases per 10,000, it barely scratches at 250. So there is a possibility in the next two years it could reach up to 250 uh, per year, um, but it doesn't look like it could go below 100. So the normalization of data. So min-max is one of the popular ways to normalize data. For every number in the data set to be normalized, the minimum value of that data set 
gets transformed into a 0, and the maximum value gets transformed into a 1, and every other value gets transformed into a decimal between 0 and 1. Here is the formula for the min-max normalization. And then if you look at the bottom, here is my data graphed after the normalization. And here is a five number summary for the box and whisker plot. So the box and whisker plot displays the distribution of data based on the five number summary. And that includes the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and maximum. Using this box plot, I can identify outliers and clean the data again to ensure that the outliers are not affecting the data. And here are the five number summaries of my data. And now I have the box and whisker plots drawn out here. Um, they are all a uh, carbon copy of uh, what it showed on the lecture of how to create the box and whisker plots and I drew each of these out. Some of them have uh, very widespread out um, box and whisker plots. I It was also kind of hard. I think they're evenly spread out uh, for most of them. Um, so there wasn't any like leaning to one side of, but the median does move with inside that box as well. And that is it for my presentation. Any questions or concerns? Thank you.